Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Hardware City channel. Well, I think you all would like to know why it took me about four years or so to, to make new content for my channel. Uh, I bet you would like to know. Well, let's say I um, opened another field of research for me that uh, turned out to be very interesting and important, at least for myself. And um, well, those topics are not really matching the content uh, on let's say, the, the context of this channel, so I publish my experiments somewhere else, let's say. Okay. Um, nevertheless, I come back um, to this channel because I got some, some nice comments from the guys uh, like you, from my subscribers, uh, asking me uh, why don't you make any more uh, content for this channel. It was quite interesting what you did, especially in the Oberon channel, but also the Hardware City channel. And uh, I think, well, um, I should take my time to also make content for this channel once again because I have a lot of new ideas I want to share with you and so I have to find out how to split my um, rare resources between all those different tasks. <clears throat> well, anyway. The episode from today is dedicated to my dear friend the NE555 timer chip. You know, I'm coming back to this little chip um, once in a while because I always get new ideas what to do with this uh, very versatile, or the most versatile chip in the world in my eyes. Um, as you know, um, you can wire the NE555 a very simple way uh, as, an, um, as an oscillator that generates um, square wave impulses of a constant frequency you can tune. So this sounds basically like this. So you can sweep the frequency by hand by turning a potentiometer. But what if I say that this tiny little guy here also can produce sounds like this? You wouldn't believe, but I'll show you. The easiest way to explain you um, what I found by accident is to take a look at the data sheet of the NE555. Here you see, uh, according to the data sheet, a typical here you see a typical application for a stable operation. That means the pins six and two, namely the upper and lower thresholds, trigger of the NE555 are wired together, connected to the timing capacitor and then we have a standard configuration for the resistor network that is uh, routing the current into the capacitor and out of it. So what I did is this here. I mean, I really found this by accident. I, I, was, I intended just to do what you see here. I wanted to make a simple generator that produces um, square wave impulses for some application I had in mind. Because I was in a hurry and I wasn't very accurate in my work, I did something wrong. So I connected pin 6 not to pin 2, I connected pin 6 to pin 7. And pin 2 connected to the capacitor. This network here with the diodes was just something I implemented because I wanted to uh, make a pulse width modulation um, circuit. And should work on a fixed frequency and by turning this potentiometer the pulse width modulation or the duty cycle of the signal should be um, tuned up and down this wall. Very straightforward um, idea. So my fault was just that pin 6 originally should be connected to pin 2 and I accidentally connected to pin 7 and suddenly this circuit here, this NE555 showed absolutely strange behavior. It produces sounds um, I never heard before. So the crazy thing is that the NE555 due to its very simple configuration as a timer circuit in A-stable mode is only capable to produce one frequency at a time. But what I heard was the combination of tones, obviously more than one frequency at 
at one point of time. And I, I asked myself, how is this possible? What the hell can make this little fault I made turn this uh, simple timer circuit into something that uh, generate such complex patterns of tones and sounds. This is also almost something uh, like a chaotic behavior. So what I did to scrutinize this phenomenon a little deeper, I made a device, like I always do when I want to scrutinize something in deeper detail. This is a simple wooden box. It contains the circuit and a rechargeable battery. You can switch it on here and you can tune this potentiometer I showed you in the schematic up and down here. Forget about the modulation input, this is not important for now. Also this modulation uh, potentiometer is not important for now. And this here is just a switch that is connected to a divider. The divider is nothing more than a binary counter I connected in series to the output of the NA555 because those frequencies um, that are oscillating at a very high, um, at least for any 505 on a very high frequency around 100 to 200 kilohertz, um, are not audible. And I wanted to make them audible in a very easy way just by scaling down the frequency and with the switch here I can tap the different outputs of the binary counter and um, make them audible through this socket here on the rear side. So, this is the circuit in action. I chose the uh, um, the highest output of the binary counter. That means uh, I, I'm tapping the signal directly coming out of the NE505 on pin 3. And <clears throat> you can see that what we got here is not at all something like a steady frequency you would expect from the NE505. It's something that wiggles up and down. but as you can see, there is some kind of pattern in it. Something, some parts are repeating always the same way while others are changing constantly. If we um, take a shot from this, you can see the principle. We have those bigger impulses here in a, in a certain distance, um, generating those low frequencies. And then there are those small bursts of these higher frequencies with varying um, duty cycle and these are generating the higher tones. It's very strange. And why, when I'm turning the um, pulse width modulation potentiometer, you can see it, it pattern constantly changes. And we have some parts where the signal seems to jump from one uh, pattern into another one. These are all, all quick shots from the signal while I'm turning the potential meter. And you can see it's, it's always a little different. a better impression of what, what's taking place there in terms of tones and sounds, I, um, I made a quick setup and I uh, used the signal from this device and I routed it into the um, line input of my computer sound card and I used the program spectrogram 
uh, that gives a visual interpretation of those frequencies that are present in the signal. And uh, it's really interesting to see uh, how the signal behaves and how at certain point it goes into chaos and then um, comes back to some, let's say, a pool of some very uh, um, specified frequencies and then some kind of forking appears, uh, like, the, like the bifurcation in the Feigenbaum fractal, where the frequency splits into two different other frequencies that are going, um, in, in, taking more and more distance from, from each other. Uh, better you take a look at yourself. It's really weird stuff, isn't it? What you can achieve with just one piece of silicon in this little circuit named NE555. It's, even this circuit is so simple and because of the simplicity so versatile, it always reveals new facet of the magic that is underlying um, this piece of electronic. Um, I need to tell you one more thing uh, because 
some of the um, video sequences you saw, especially from the, the spectrogram and the um, the outtakes, the, the excerpts uh, I showed you, uh, were not made uh, from the device I showed you. I mean, this one here. Um, because I made uh, a lot of these uh, circuits because I found out that it's uh, the components are highly critical. Some of the components are highly critical and then I'm, I'm sure going to show you um, what components are so critical. What really is critical is this capacitor here C1 and this inductor L1. From an electrotechnical point of view, um, this inductor makes absolutely no sense because what you always want to achieve when you're connecting a power supply pin to the, to the power supply rail is you want a low impedance connection so that you are um, far away from interferences that can occur when you have a high impedance. And in this circuit here, I deliberately made the opposite. I made the power input here a high impedance input. This is because I found out that apart from these strange effects taking place uh, from wrong wiring pin 6 to pin 7, uh, one of the outcomes is a strange kind of self-oscillation this circuit falls into. And the self-oscillation is also specified by this capacitor and this inductor forming a kind of LC, a serial LC circuit, uh, amplifying some of the resonances that also are having some kind of feedback on uh, the, the uh, timing capacities or the timing abilities of the circuit. So this whole thing here is, is somehow mysterious. So you can play with all those um, uh, p components here. This part here is not n not very interesting. You can't change it without having much much impact. Uh, uh, apart from maybe changing the um, tone frequency generally up and down. The same applies for this resistor here. Um, this here is uh, th this potentiometer. You should. Uh, also keep it like it is because there's not, nothing much different when you change it to a 1 mega or 10k or something like that. You only are shifting the, the basic frequency, this, or the, the air area of frequency this um, chip is working with up and down. <clears throat> the same accounts for this um, capacitor here. When you change this one then also only the frequency is going up and down basically. So now you got the facts and it's up to you what you want to do with this. I would recommend to replicate this circuit and make your own experiences. I think it's full of wonder and there's still a lot of things that are not yet discovered. Um, if I want to give you one thing as an experience uh, on your way back home with my videos, then that Magic and wonder in some kind, even in the world of technics and physics, is always waiting around the corner. Maybe sometimes it just takes a little deviation from our um, usual way of thinking and acting, or just making a small error, and suddenly something very strange and very fascinating takes place, and uh, you are given the opportunity to experience it. I think this is something very interesting and very valuable, at least for me, why I'm still doing research in this area. Thank you, bye and stay tuned, there will be more to come.